This is a leader video tutorial. The subject of this tutorial is creating and editing audio recordings in Audacity. Audacity is a free and open source audio recording and editing software platform with a number of useful features and effects. This short tutorial will cover the most useful of these effects for use in student recordings. To record in Audacity, press the red record button. Leader recommends you leave five to 10 seconds of ambient room sound at the beginning of each of your recordings. This is because Audacity is able to filter out unwanted background noise to a certain degree. In order to do so, it needs a base sample of the background noise of the room you are in. Although it is best practice to try to find as quiet a place as possible, we do understand that at times, it is unavoidable to have background noise. How to use this feature will be covered later in this tutorial. To record, simply press the red record button. You will see the timeline begin moving, a waveform appear for your voice, and the time being recorded appear at the bottom. You may pause the recording at any time and stop at any time. Facts and other effects you have done. However, if you are completed with your work, or if all the tracks that you have are currently on the screen, when you are done recording, you may save your work. If you click Save Project, this will save the project as an Audacity project file. This file can only be opened in Audacity. This is most useful if you wish to continue working on this project, as it will keep all the different tracks you are able to lay down in this project. However, if you are completely done and wish for your work to be compressed into a single file, you may choose Export and export as an MP3 or as a WAV file. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use some pre-recorded audio. Now, since I already have a window open, I simply import my audio, and you can see my sample podcast at the very top in seconds, and the waveform when there's audio. You will notice I left a small amount of space at the very beginning to use as a baseline in case I need to use the noise reduction tool. One of the great things about Audacity is that you can add additional tracks to add background music or sound effects or other things to your podcast. First, I'm going to show you the very basics of editing. By using the selection tool, you're able to mark parts of your podcast by simply clicking and dragging. Once you've done so, you can edit. And in this case, I'm going to cut out that white noise there because it's a little too long of a gap. You're also able to remove parts that you may not want in your podcast anymore. Let's say you made a mistake in this area and wish to replace it with a different audio. This is useful in case you record an entire podcast and then find in the middle there's a part you're not really happy with, you're able to cut that part out. That's why we suggest that recording a podcast, you leave some spaces, as you can see here, between segments and not continue audio because it gives you a little bit of flexibility when it comes to editing. Now, let's get back to the very beginning here and let's open up a sound effect. Once again, we're importing audio. Because if you don't import, if you use the open tool, it'll open up the project in a brand new window. So at opening this audio, and here we have a sound effect. I'm just gonna hit play. Okay, I pulled that out of the BBC uh, archives, which is a great archive to use for sound effects and the information at the end of this tutorial. Now, Audacity starts everything, no matter how many tracks you put up, in the same moment, zero, the very beginning. If that's not what you want, you can use the time shift tool to move it around. So let's say I wanted to play here, or I wanted to play over some of my audio if I'm talking about medicine or I want to have some interesting sound effect in the background. This is one way to do it. And when you finally export your project, it will all be condensed into one single file and you won't have these multiple tracks. However, maybe you don't want to work with so many tracks because if you keep adding and adding tracks, it's a lot to keep track of. So what you can do is you can 
select and highlight the bit you like, copy it, and then selecting the point in your main audio file, you can paste it right in there, and then adjust it how you like by cutting out uh, additional sound. So that's one way you can just insert some sound. It will open up space. It won't overwrite anything. It will just paste it in there and enter your podcast. So that's one way you can do it. And when you're done with a track, you can just hit the little X here. Now, I'm gonna try adding some music. Now here we see, once again, I have a musical track. It extends across the entire one. So I'm gonna hit play, making sure that we're back on our selection tool at the very beginning. So hit play. <laughs> Hello listeners, this is Sample Audio. So as you can see there, both tracks play simultaneously. You are able to adjust the volume of a track by using the controls here. So if you want some soft music in the background the entire time, you can do that and then have it rise and settle down. It's also helpful if the audio you recorded is a bit too low. While there is a master control, we suggest you use the ones track by track in order to make sure the mixing comes out more or less even as you're able to adjust things differently. Now, I'm going to show perhaps one of the more interesting tools we can use and something that makes your podcast sound a little more professional, which is the fade in and fade out tools. What fade in and fade out do is you've probably heard it in any kind of audio show is that you start music and the music starts coming down and then the audio picks up. In order to do this, Let's pick the point where we want the audio to pretty much end on the music track. And I'm gonna select the rest of the music and just cut it out. Now I have this little bit of music in the very beginning. I select it, I go to effects and we can fade in and fade out. I'll click fade out and you can see the waveform go from loud to quiet. So turning down the volume here a little bit, Starting at the very beginning, let's hear what happens. Hello listeners, this is Sample Audio. So, you can do that also to fade in if you want to put music at the very end of your podcast or your final credits. So, these are a couple of very basic things you can do. And I'm going to add one more to show. I want to import from audio. And here's another sound effect, turning down the volume a little bit. So here's some sound of cheering. Again, this is a kind of special effect you can do if you want to say, hey, we're here at the baseball game and you can have music in the background. Or if you want to say, have a moment in which your host or co-host say something, you want to have laughter, you want to have special effect play, then you can have it there. Now, in this case, if you want to have two tracks playing simultaneously, you do need to have the two tracks visible here. Cutting and pasting something in will just play the audio in sequence. So as you saw the special effect I have here, I have my audio, it stops the special effects play, my audio continues. If I wanted the special effect to play under, connected to, as one audio track, I would have to have it here, like at this section. So once again, I'm going to use my selection tool. I'm gonna to cut off parts I don't need. And then going back to the very beginning here, I can use the time shift tool and I can have this cheering start at any point I want. And that way it'll play and then the cheering will start. I will demonstrate. Since I'm going to need a lot, I'm just going to read out some Shakespeare. Our revels are now ended. These are our actors. As I foretold you, we're all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like this basis fat. There you go. And yes, I simply read out Shakespeare for this podcast because I simply need some audio. Now, these are the very basics of using Audacity as far as recording, cutting, pasting, and using some basic special effects. Once again, we encourage you to play with some of the effects. You're not gonna break anything as long as you work from a backup copy. 
Again, you never want to use your original audio because if you do and something goes wrong, that could be a serious problem for you because you may not have enough time to re-record the audio, you may not be able to find your guest. Always work from that backup. Now, the last bit I'm going to show, oh, uh, I did also want to mention there is a zoom in tool. And this is useful for very small cuts and edits, and you may want to get to like the seconds of what you're doing here. Finally, let's take a look at reducing background noise. This is a tool that Audacity is able to use to try to cut out some background sound. Let's say you have a lawnmower running in the background. What Audacity is able to do is if you have a small sample of just that background noise and the noise you want to get rid of compared to the noise you want to keep, which is your audio and your voice, Audacity is able to look at the file and compare it. So it says, well, here in this file, there's some background noise of a lawnmower. Obviously, it doesn't know what a lawnmower is, but it understands that there's a certain sound. And then your voice. In the tracks where it's your voice and that sound, it will do its best to remove the sound and leave your voice. Again, this isn't 100%, but it is very helpful in case you do have issues. To do this, simply select the piece of audio that's simply the background noise. Once you've done so, go back to the handy effects menu. And from here, you want to click noise reduction. There's two steps to this. First, you want to get the noise, noise profile. This allows Audacity to analyze the clip and figure out what's going on. Once you have done that, select your entire audio track with the selection tool. Then go back to effects, go back to noise reduction. And here, now you just click only OK at the bottom. Now, in this particular one, you probably won't notice much of a change because I did record in a quiet room. But should there be a lot of background noise, it will help. Again, it's limited. And if you don't like what happened, you can always revert your change and go back and try again with the different features involved. You see there's different ways to adjust the sensitivity, the frequency, and noise reduction. So through trial and error, you may have a better effect than the baseline default which Audacity starts off with. Again, once you are done, you'll want to save your file by exporting it as an MP3. It'll ask you where to put it and name. And then you'll also get metadata tags. This is useful to fill out, putting in the, your name for artist name. Track title could be the name of your podcast. Album title could be the class. This is all just useful information in case this file winds up somewhere and people wonder where did this come from. It has your name put on it. Of course, you are free to use a pseudonym or other name if you are uncomfortable putting your own name on this. But it is useful for a professor or other person to make sure that a certain piece of work belongs to a certain someone, especially for grading. This completes our tutorial. Please consult the handouts if you have further questions. Audacity has its own manual, which may also consult. Feel free to play around with this as much as possible. However, and we do stress this, always work from a copy of your original video. Should something happen to your original sound, there is very little chance of being able to recover it if too many mistakes have been made. Working from a copy allows you to be as experimental as possible and not have to worry about ruining your original work. The free music used in this was Secret Agent Rock by John Bartman, and the sound effects were courtesy of the BBC under copyright 2018. This has been an Audacity video tutorial on creating and editing audio recordings. Once again, if you have any questions, contact Leader or the TA assigned to your class.